Bible speak. I'm Brother Melvin. I'll be your teacher today, and my reader for today is Brother Mark. And the topic that we're going to deal with today is take heed that no man deceive you. This is part two about God's laws and commandments. You know, this is, this is a series that I'm doing uh, that the Lord is trying to warn you to take heed about his commandments and his laws, because somewhere along the way, it's been taught that we don't have to keep God's commandments and laws no more, that we're under grace. And I always ask a simple question, under grace, what do I do under grace? Under grace, do I have to, can I lie, can I steal? You know, and this is what we're going to deal with. We're just going to take a look and show you that in God's raw law, see, I think that's what some people get confused about, that God have a raw law, which is called the Ten Commandments, and you have to keep these commandments. As always, we start this in Matthew 24 and verse 1. We're going to start in Matthew 24 and verse 1. Okay, go ahead, brother. And Jesus went out and departed from the temple, and his disciples came to him for to show him the buildings of the temple. Go ahead. And Jesus said unto them, See ye not all these things? Verily I say unto you, There shall not be left here one stone upon another that shall not be thrown down. Go ahead. And as he sat upon Mount of Olives, the disciples came unto him privately, saying, Tell us, when shall these things be, and what shall be the sign of thy coming, and of the end of the world? Now these guys came and asked Jesus, they said, Jesus was telling them about this temple is going to be towed down, and they wanted to know, so, well, what is, what is, what, when will these things be, and what shall be the sign of thy coming, and the end of the world? Look at the first something that Jesus told them. Go ahead. And Jesus answered and said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you. He said, Take heed that no man deceive you. So if Jesus is warning you about somebody going to come along and deceive you, then you need to take heed to it. And let, that let you know that somebody going to be out here trying to deceive you. Uh, uh, go ahead. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ. And shall deceive many. Now he said, many going to come in my name. In other words, many going to come in the name of Christianity. And they going to deceive many. I ain't, don't get me wrong. I ain't saying nothing wrong with Christianity. I'm just telling you that people going to come in the name of Jesus. And going to deceive many. Skip down to verse 11 and go ahead. And many false prophets shall rise and shall deceive many. Now he said many false prophets going to rise. This is talking about the end time that many false prophets going to arrive and going to deceive many. And you can see it now because we got a church now almost on every corner in every city. And, and you got to check out these, these, these preachers because he said many false prophets going to arrive and see many. But let's... Let's, 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 let's go into Acts the 13th chapter because we need to check out and see what a false prophet is because maybe you don't understand what a false prophet is. We're going we to show you. Acts 13, and we're going to pick it up at verse 2. Acts 13 and 2. Okay, go ahead. As they ministered to the Lord and fast, the Holy Ghost said, Separate me Barnabas and Saul for the work whereunto I have called them. Now, now skip down to verse 6 and go ahead. And when they had gone through the Isles of Paphos, they found a certain sorcerer, a false prophet, a Jew whose name was Bar-Jesus. And they found this Jew in there that was a false prophet. His name was Bar-Jesus. And, and let's, let's, see what the, let's see what the characteristic of a false prophet. Go ahead. Which was with the deputy of the, the country, Sergius Paulus, a prudent man, who called for Barnabas and Saul and desired to hear the word of God. Now this guy called Paul and, and Barnabas. He wanted to hear the word of God, but this false prophet was there. Go ahead. But Elymas, the sorcerer, for so is his name by interpretation, withstood them, seeking to turn away the deputy from the faith. Go ahead. Then Saul, who also called Paul, filled with the Holy Ghost, set his eyes on him and said, 
O full of all subtly and all mischief, thou, thou child of the devil. Now you see what he calling this guy? The child of the devil. Go ahead. Thou enemy of all righteousness. Wilt thou not cease to pervert the right ways of the Lord? Now you see what a false prophet do? He pervert the right way of the Lord. And let's see what pervert means. Let's look up this definition, pervert. It, pervert means to change something so that it is no longer what it was or should be. It, uh, uh, another definition is, is to cause uh, one to turn aside away from what is good or the true or, or what's right. Another definition is to twist, to twist the meaning of a sense of something. See, that's what a false prophet do. He pervert the word of God. In other words, he changed the word of God and perverted. And, and if you don't have no understanding, you're going to be deceived by this guy. You're going to be, you're going to be deceived by these false prophets. And this is what I have to, this is the reason why I want to warn you too. If you get deceived by these false prophets, is God just going to pat you on your back and say you was in front of a false prophet and he going to let you come on into the kingdom, my brother and sister? I don't think so. Let's look what he said here in Matthew the seventh chapter. Let's go to Matthew 7 and pick it up at verse 15. Matthew 7 and 15. Okay, go ahead. Beware of false prophets. Beware of false prophets. Right back to false prophets. Go ahead. Which come to you in sheep clothing, but inwardly they are raving wolves. Ye shall know them by their fruits. Do men gather grapes of thorns or figs of thistles? Now he said you're going to know them by their fruit. What fruit is he talking about? The fruit of their lips. You're going to know them by their words. You won't know them by their words. Because if their words are not in this book, then they putting some that's putting some on the table that's, that's not from the Lord. Skip down to verse, verse 20 and go ahead. Wherefore, by their fruits ye shall know them. You're gonna know them by their words. Go ahead. Not everyone that says unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. But he that doeth the will of my Father, which is in heaven. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord. Have we not prophesied in thy name? Now, who, who, is, who are these people that he's dealing with right here? These are church people. When the last time you was at the barber shop and somebody prophesied over you? This is church people here. Go ahead. And in thy name have cast out devils. And then cast out devils in the name of Jesus. Go ahead. And in thy name done many wonderful works. They done done many wonderful work in the name of Jesus. Go ahead. And then will I profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. See, that's why he said you better take heed that no man deceive you. Because if somebody's telling you you don't have to keep God's commandment, they are deceiving you. And when you stand before God, you're going to get this message right here. I never knew you. I never knew you. So uh, 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 you better take heed because God is trying to warn you. Now, let's, we're going to deal with this, uh, uh, the laws and the commandments. Let's go to Revelation 22. And I'm going to show you in this Bible how many times that it say you got to keep the law. Oh, oh okay. Uh, did you read verse? Wait. Stop that 23. Okay, go ahead. Therefore, whosoever heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them, I will liken him unto a wise man which built his house upon a rock. Okay, go ahead. Let's uh, skip down to verse 26 and go ahead. And everyone that hear these sayings of mine and do of them not shall be likened unto a foolish man which build his house upon the sand. Now I'm going to ask you a simple question. Are you a foolish man? Or are you a wise man? Because a foolish man is going to accept anything coming before him. But a wise man is going to look into, look into the situation. And that's what we're going to do now. We're going to look into this uh, uh, about this laws and commandments. Let's go into Revelation 22. Revelation 22, and we're going to pick it up at verse 12. Revelation 22 and verse 12. Okay, go ahead. And behold, I come quickly, and my reward is with me, to give every man according as his work shall be. Now, this is Jesus talking here. Go ahead. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. Blessed are they that do his commandments, that they may have right to the tree of life, and may enter in through the gates into the city. Now he said, blessed are they that do what? Do his commandments. I'm just going to show you how many times the Bible speaks about doing God's commandment. 
He said, blessed are they that do his commandment, that they have a right to enter into the city. What city is he talking about? Back up to Revelation 21. Revelation 21 and pick it up at verse 1. Okay, go ahead. And I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven was for the first heaven and the first earth was passed away. Go ahead. And there was no more sea. And I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. Go ahead. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them. And they shall be his people, and God himself shall be with them and be their God. Now, how are you going to enter into this, this great city if you don't keep God's commandments? This, we, I, I took you to the, end, to the end of the book to show you when we get to Revelation, he's still talking about you got to keep these commandments. You got to keep God's commandment. But maybe we don't understand that God got the, the raw law. Let's go and deal with the commandments that... That, 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 that people threw in the garbage can. Let's go to James, the second chapter. Go to James, the second chapter. And we're going to pick it up in our verse 8. James, James 2 and 8. James 2 and 8. Okay, go ahead. If you fulfill the royal law according now, to the Now, you see what he's saying? If you fulfill the royal law. You see what we're dealing with? We're dealing with the royal law. Go ahead. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Ye do well. But if ye have respect to persons... You commit sin and are convinced of the law as transgressors. Go ahead. For whosoever shall keep the whole law and yet offend in one point, he is guilty of all. See, this is what people want to go here and they say, well, who can keep the whole law? Now, he, what he's saying is you got to keep the whole law because uh, I'm going to show you that this, this law, that these commandments is not grievous. When, what he's telling you, well, he's going to tell you. Go ahead and read. For well, he that said, do not commit adultery, said also, do not kill. Go ahead. Now if thou commit no adultery, yet if thou kill, thou art become a transgressor of the law. See, he is telling you, you can't, you can't be a liar, but you say, well, I ain't killed nobody. So in other words, you got to keep the whole, the whole law, brothers and sisters. Yes, that's your duty, is to keep the whole law. What verse we stopped at? Stopped at 11. Go ahead. So speak ye, and, and so do, as... They that shall be judged by the law of liberty. Go ahead. For he, for he shall have judgment without mercy, that have shown no mercy, and mercy rejoice against judgment. Now he's letting you know he ain't going to, that's what we just read. When you stand before God, he's going to say, I never know you if you don't keep his commandment, because the servant of God got to keep his commandment. This is not a, 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 a make a deal thing. This is a commandment from the Lord that you got to keep. You know, let's go into, let's go and look at these. This, this royal law. Let's go to Exodus 20. And let's look at this royal law. Exodus 20, and we're just going we gonna, to gonna read right through the, the royal law that God set up, which is the Ten Commandments. Exodus 20, and we're going to pick it up at verse 1. Okay, go ahead. And God spake all these words, saying, I am the Lord thy God, which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Go ahead. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above or that is in the earth beneath or that is in the water under the earth. Now, can we may have any other god before God? Have God did away with that? I don't think so. Go ahead. Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them nor serve them. For I, the Lord thy God, am a jealous God. God still a jealous God. Go ahead. Visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generations of them that hate me, and showing mercy unto thousands of them that love me and keep my commandments. Who he's showing mercy to? He's showing mercy unto a thousand of them that do what? That 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 that, that keep his commandments. So, so what if I don't keep them? Because you see the other side of that? He's showing mercy and and, 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 and mercy unto thousands of them that love me and keep my command. We're going to touch on this love thing in a minute. Go ahead. Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain. Do, can we do that now? If it's been done away with, then we can take the Lord's name in vain if these commandments have been done away with. Go ahead. For the Lord will not hold him guiltless that take of his name in vain. Go ahead. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Wait a minute. 
Remember the Sabbath day to keep it on. The Sabbath day is part of the commandments. And everybody just overlooked the Sabbath day. He didn't tell you to make up to you a Sabbath day. He gave you a Sabbath day in this same book he called the Bible, that, which is the seventh day of the week, what we call Saturday. He said, remember the Sabbath day. What are you supposed to do on What else? Six days shall thy labor and do all thy work. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. In it thou shalt not do any work, thou, nor thy son, nor thy daughter, thy manservant, nor thy maidservant, nor thy cattle, nor thy stranger that is within thy gates. For in six days the Lord made heaven and the earth, the sea, and all that in them is, and rested the seventh day. Wherefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and hallowed it. Now what day did he bless the seventh day? And people don't want to honor this. Then we just read if you if you guilt in one place in the law, then you guilt to the whole law. So if you keep all these other commandments and omit the Sabbath day, you still guilt of a, you you as a transgressor of the law. That's what we just read. You know, so you got to keep the whole law. You can't say, well, we can't keep the Sabbath day no more. No, you got to keep the whole law. Go ahead. Honor thy father and thy mother. Do we, do we, we don't have to honor our father and mother no more? After the law been done away with, we shouldn't have to. Go ahead. That thy days may be long upon the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. Go ahead. Thou shalt not kill. So I guess we can kill now. You can't even kill it in man's law. And this is not, now you don't tell me God and did away with that? Go ahead. Thou shalt not commit adultery. So you can commit adultery now since the law been done away with now. So use all you, all you have to do is try not to get caught. So apparently if the law been done away with, go ahead. Thou shalt not steal. So you can steal now. I'm talking, brothers and sisters, it's just common sense that, that if you're a servant of God, you can't do these things. Go ahead. Thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbor. Thou shalt not cover thy neighbor's house. Thou shalt not cover thy neighbor's wife, nor his manservant, nor his maidservant, nor his ox, nor his ass, nor anything that is thy neighbor. I guess you can do that now since the law has been done away with. Brothers and sisters, I'm just trying to show you that this royal law, you're going to have to keep this, you have to keep this law, brothers and sisters. Let's go to Matthew, Matthew 19. Let's go to Matthew 19. Because he wrote, he wrote the commandments in stone for a reason. Because he wrote them in stone to let you know, hey, these laws going to be around. Matthew 19. Matthew 19. Let's see what Jesus said. Since you said that's Old Testament, let's see what Jesus said. Because brothers and sisters, you just wasting time. And you think you can serve, serve the law without keeping his laws and statutes. Uh, Matthew 19. And we're going to pick it up at verse 16. Okay, go ahead. And behold, one came and said unto him, Good master, what good things shall, shall I do that I may have eternal life? Now this guy want to know what he have to do to have eternal life. Go ahead. And he said unto him, Why callest thou me good? There is none good but one, that is God. But if thou wilt enter into life, if, keep if the command. If he said, if you want eternal life, what you got to do? Keep the command. Keep the commandments. Keep the commandments. Go ahead, read the next verse. He said unto him, which? Jesus said, thou should do no murder. Thou should not commit adultery. Thou should not steal. Thou should not bear false witness. Honor thy father and thy mother. This sounds like the same one we just got to read in Exodus. Uh, Go ahead. And thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. You're supposed to love thy neighbor as thyself. I'm not, now that's what Jesus said. Let's go into Paul's writings. Since everybody think Paul can override Jesus. But I'm going to show you. Paul is saying the same thing that Jesus is saying. Let's go to Romans 13. Romans 13. I'm just going to show you how many times if you stand and let some false prophet deceive you after listening to this. And I'm showing you all over the Bible where he's telling you, you got to keep the commandments. Romans 13 and verse 8. Romans 13 and verse 8. Go ahead. Owe no man anything. He's owe no man anything. Go ahead. But to love one another. But to love one another. Go ahead. For he that love of another have fulfilled the law. He's called love is the fulfilling of the law. And I'm going to show you how, you how you do that. Go ahead. For this, thou shalt not commit adultery. Thou shalt not kill. Thou shalt not steal. Thou shalt not bear false witness. Thou shalt not covet. And if there be any other commandment, it is briefly comprehended in this saying, namely, 
Thou shall love thy neighbor as thyself. See, because if you love your, if you love your brothers and sisters, you ain't going to steal from them. If you, if you love your brothers and sisters, you ain't going to kill them. In other words, you got to, this is, 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 these steal the Ten Commandments. This raw law. Read that next verse. Go ahead. Love work of no ill to his neighbor. He's a love work of no ill to his neighbor. Therefore, love is the fulfilling of the law. See, I'm gonna, and I'm going to show you what he means that love is the fulfilling of the law. Because you got to do something to show people that you love. Love ain't no good if you, you know, you can, you can do the lip service about love. But he said love is the fulfilling of the law. I'm going to show you, we, we dealing with one of the greatest, one of the greatest commandments. Let's go and look at the first greatest commandment. Let's go to Matthew, back up to Matthew, let's go to Matthew 22. And let's look at the great, the first, these two great, great commandments. Matthew 22, and we're going to pick it up at, uh, at verse 35. Matthew 22 and verse 35. Go ahead. Then one of them, which was a lawyer, asked him a question, tempting him and saying, Master, which is the great commandment in the law? He want to know which is the great commandment in the law. Look what Jesus said. Go ahead. Jesus said unto him, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment. This is the first and the greatest commandment. Uh, go ahead and read that next verse. And the second is like unto it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Now that's the one we just got through dealing with. You know, if you love your neighbor, you ain't gonna you ain't gonna steal from him. But let's see how you love the Lord, because he said this is the first and the greatest commandment. Let's see how you love the Lord. Let's go to John four John fourteen. I'm told you let the Bible bear things out, brothers and sisters. Don't let nobody take away your crown. When it's when when the word of God is this simple. John <coughs> excuse me. John 14 and verse 15. Go ahead. If you love me, keep my commandments. If you do what? If you love me. Keep my commandments. That's what this is Jesus talking. He just said you have to love the Lord with all your heart. And he's saying if you love me, what you got to do? Keep my, keep commandments. my commandments. Skip down to verse 21 and go ahead. He that have my commandments. He that have my commandments. And keep of them. And keep them. He it is that love of me. That's the one that loved Jesus. The one that keep his commandments. Go ahead. And he that love of me shall be loved of my father, and I will love him, and will manifest myself in him. See, that's what people don't understand. They don't even know Jesus because they don't keep his commandment. How can the Lord manifest himself to you if you don't keep his commandment? Man, uh, let's go to John 15. John 15, and pick it up at verse 1. John 15 and 1. Go ahead. I am the true vine, and my father is the husband man. Now skip down to verse 9 and go ahead. As the Father have loved me, so have I loved you. Continue ye in my love. He said, I love you, but you got to continue in my love. Why? Go ahead. If ye keep my commandments, ye shall abide in my love. Now you got to keep his commandment to abide in his love. Go ahead. Even as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. See, Jesus had to keep the Father's commandment. And we don't, we supposed to be following what he's doing? So we got to keep the commandments to abide in his love. Skip down to uh, verse 13 and go ahead. Greater love have no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friend. Now how, how, how do you know you God's friend? Look what he say. Go ahead. Ye are my friends if ye do whatever I command you. He said, you are my friend if you do whatever I command you. Go ahead. Henceforth, I call you not servants, for the servant knoweth not what his Lord doeth. But I have called you friends, for all things that I have heard of my Father I have made known unto you. See, when you become a friend of God, you got to be keeping his commandments. Other than that, he don't even know you. He do not know you now, now let's back let's go back to matthew 22 and uh uh, uh, uh i'm gonna show you on these uh, uh on these two on these two commandments hang the whole law if you if you brothers can put that up uh that chart up about the ten commandments matthew 22 go back to matthew 22 and we gonna read verse verse 40 and i and i want you guys to put that chart up to show that uh on these uh on these two commandments hang the whole law uh, but uh, right, uh, uh, Matthew 22 and verse 40. Read that. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. He's on these two commandments hang all the law 
and the prophet. So if you love the Lord, would you have any God before him? No. If you love the Lord, would you take his name in vain? No, you wouldn't. If you love the Lord, you would have no other God before him. If you love the Lord, because the Lord asks you to remember the Sabbath day. If you love him, then you, just like a man, if he loves his wife, then he, he try to do the thing that pleases his wife, or vice versa. You know, so if you love the Lord, when you try to do the thing that pleases him, he said, remember the Sabbath day, since the Lord asked me to do this, and I love the Lord, guess what I'm going to do? I'm going to keep the Sabbath day. Same thing if I love my neighbor as myself, because that's why he said love is fulfilling of the law because these laws are hung on love. Because if I love my neighbor, I ain't going to steal from him. If I love my neighbor, I ain't going to kill him. If I love my neighbor, I ain't going to bear false witness on him. And I ain't going to cover nothing that belonged to my neighbor. That is love, brothers and sisters. Mm -hmm. And that's what, that's what he said on these two laws hang the whole commandment. Let's go to Isaiah 48 right quick. Isaiah 48. So I want to show you something that Jesus said. Isaiah 48. And I do mean Jesus. Isaiah 48, and we're going to pick it up at verse 16. Isaiah 48 and 16. Go ahead. Come ye near unto me. Hear ye this. I have not spoken in secret from the beginning. From the time that it was, there I am. Go ahead. And now the Lord God and his spirit have sent me. Now who done sent this guy? This is Jesus. He let you know that the Father sent him. Go ahead. Thus said the Lord, thy Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel. How many holy ones do we have? You have a one holy one, and that's Jesus. Go ahead. I am the Lord thy God, which teacheth thee to profit, which leadeth thee by the way that thou should have go. Oh, that thou hast hearkened to my commandment. He said, oh, that thou hast hearkened to my commandment. What, then what? Then had thy peace been as a river, and thy righteousness as the waves of the sea. Well, uh, 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 look, what, look what else he said. Go ahead. Thy seed also had been as the sand. And the, and the offspring of thy bowels like the gravel thereof. His name should not have been cut off nor destroyed from before me. Now he let you know that Israel's name is cut off because what? They wouldn't keep his commandments. He's old that y'all have kept my commandments. Right. Then your name wouldn't have been cut off. Then the whole world would be calling you no Negro. The world would know that you Israel. But since we didn't keep the commandment, the name Israel been cut off. Don't nobody know that you Israel. Simply because they wouldn't keep the commandments. But you, I, he said, oh, that you would have kept my commandments. Oh, Lord, why you didn't make them real easy? But I'm going to show you what he did. He did make them easy. Let's go to 1 John because he's going to let you know his commandment is not grievous. You know, the, the, uh, the commandment is not grievous. Let's, let's, let's go to uh, 1 John. 1 John 5. 1 John 5 and verse 1. 1 John 5 and verse 1. Okay, go ahead. Whosoever believe that Jesus is the Christ is born of God, and everyone that love him, that begot love, him also that is begotten of him. Now, how can you love the Lord? You got to keep his commandment. Then we just read that. Go ahead. By this we know that we love the children of God when we love God, and keep his commandments. How many times do we have to read this for somebody to realize you got to keep the commandments? Go ahead. For this is the love of God. This is the love of God. That we keep his commandments. That we keep his commandments. And his commandments are not grievous. His commandments are not grievous. His commandments ain't hard. People are, oh, those commandments are too hard. Like God don't know what, God didn't create a man, but he don't know the battery to put in man. It's like you done created a toy and you don't know how to make the toy work. God, man is God's creation. He know what man can deal with. He know man can deal with, with the commandments. And he said these commandments is not grievous. They're not grievous. They're grievous if you don't want to do them. But the commandment is not grievous. Let's go to Romans 2. Let's go to Romans 2 and let's see if Paul saying anything different. Because I ain't going to leave you nothing to hide behind because you said, well, in Paul's right now, Paul's saying the same thing that Jesus is saying. Same thing that all these other apostles are saying. This, is, this book is on one accord. Uh, 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 Romans 2, and we'll pick it up at verse 11. Romans 2 and verse 11. Go ahead. But there is no respect of person with God. There is no respect of person with God. Go ahead. 
For as many as have sinned without law shall also perish without law. And as many as have sinned in the law shall be judged by the law. Now you, pay, you see what he's saying there? He ain't saying nothing about the law and got rid of the law. Go ahead. For not the hearers of the law are just before God. Not the hearers of the law is just before God, but who are? But the doers of the law shall be justified. Now why is Paul talking about the doers of the law shall be justified if the law been done away with? Go ahead. For when the Gentiles which have not the law do by nature the things contained in the law, these having not the law are law unto themselves. See, now he's talking about the Gentile because the law was given to Israel, but he's talking about this law that's written in your mind. Go ahead. Which show the work of the law written in their hearts, their conscience also bearing witness, and their thoughts the meanwhile accusing or else excusing one another. Skip down to verse 17 and go ahead. Behold, Thou art called a Jew. Now Paul is talking, so he's talking to the, he's, he's, he's getting on these Jews, uh, these Israelites, so you call yourself a Jew, and look what you're supposed to be doing. Go ahead. And resting in the law. He's, you rest in the law because you was brought up from, you know, from childhood about the law. Go ahead. And make us thy boast of God, and know of his will, and approve the things that are more excellent, being instructed out of the law. How do you be instructed out of the law? Because when I come in a room and I see some money on the table and I decide to take it, the law tells me, say, thou should not steal. I'm at a brother's house and his wife looking all good, but I know this, this is this brother's wife. The law instruct me again. Said, thou should not commit adultery. But if you done got rid of that, then I'm going to take the money and might take the honey. Where we at? I don't want to get too full off. We're, we're 19. Go ahead. And art confident that thou thyself art a guide of the blind, and a light of them which are in darkness. See, that's what we spoke. With the people that are, that's a servant of God, we supposed to be a light to the people in the dark. This is what I'm trying to do today. That's why I'm warning you to take heed. Don't, don't pass up these ten commandments. Go ahead. An instructor of the foolish, Go ahead. a teacher of babes, which have the form of knowledge and of the truth in the law. This is Paul steady talking about this law. Go ahead. Thou therefore which teacheth another, teacheth thou not thyself. See, he was on these Jews about it. He said, man, if you're going to deal with the law, you got to keep the law. He said, you don't teach yourself. Go ahead. Thou that preaches a man should not steal, doest thou steal? You don't supposed to steal. But if the law been done away with, what is Paul talking about? Go ahead. Thou that says a man should not commit adultery, doest thou commit adultery? Thou that abhorreth idols, dost thou commit sacrilege? Thou that makest thy boast of the law, through breaking the law, dishonoreth thou God. Do you understand when you break the law, you dishonor your God? You know, if I'm in here teaching about you got to keep the law, the raw law, and then you see me out somewhere and I'm breaking the law, then I'm dishonoring my God. You have to realize that, brothers and sisters, that you dishonor your God when you break the raw law or you break God's law. Go ahead. For the name of God is blasphemed among the Gentiles through you, as it is written. For circumcision verily profit if thou keep the law. What makes your circumcision profit? If thou keep the law. If you keep the law. Go ahead. But if thou be a breaker of the law. Thy circumcision is made uncircumcised. See, God ain't going to even recognize you when you stand before him. Because you you breaking his law. You've got to keep God's law, brothers and sisters. Let's go into, uh, 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 let's go into 1 Corinthians, uh, the 7th chapter. Let's go into 1 Corinthians, the 7th chapter. Let me show you something here. I'm told it's all over the book, brothers and sisters. All you have to do is read it. Uh, uh, 7 and 17. Go ahead. But as God has distributed to every man, as the Lord have called every one, so let him walk, and so ordain I in all churches. Now skip down to verse 19 and read it. Go ahead. Circumcision is nothing. He's a circumcision is nothing. Go ahead. And uncircumcision is nothing. Go ahead. But the keeping of the commandments of God. Now what is, what is important? What is Paul is telling you? If you ain't going to keep the commandment, ain't no need you going to get circumcised. He said, what's important is keeping the commandment of God. Let's go to 1 John. Let's, let's, see, let's see do you know God if you don't keep his commandment. Because a lot of people say, I don't know what he's talking about. I know the Lord. Let's see. 
Let's go to 1 John 2. 1 John 2. I'm talking, we, we just put it on the table, and, and you can make the decision if you want to take heed to it. 1 John 2, and we're going to pick it up at verse 1. Go ahead. My little children, these things write I unto you, that ye sin not. And if any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous. Go ahead. I mean, skip down to verse 3 and go ahead. And hereby we do know that we know him. Now, now wait a minute. Hereby we do know that we know him. What we got to do? If we keep his commandments. If we keep his commandments, brothers and sisters, I, am I speaking English? You got to keep the commandments. You got to keep the commandments. Go ahead. Ye that saith, I know him, and keep of not his commandments, is a liar, and he, the truth is not in him. You see what he said? He that say, I know the Lord, and keep not the Lord's commandment, he is a what? A liar, and the truth is not in him, brother and sister. Now, how are you going to stand before a, a God in terms of, well, Lord, I didn't have to keep your commandment. But the Lord going to ask you a simple question. Do you show you know me? Yeah, I know you, Lord. He said, no, you don't know me because you don't know me. You don't know that you had to keep the commandments. What verse was that? We're five. Go ahead. But whoso keepeth his word in him, verily is the love of God perfected. Hereby know we that we are in him. He that saith he abideth in him, ought himself also so to walk, even as he walked. Now how did, how did Jesus walk? Did Jesus go about breaking the commandments? No, he did not. So you're supposed to be walking the, the same way if you following this guy. But if you following somebody else, you just be walking any way you want to. Let's go to Proverbs. Let's go to Proverbs 4. I'm, told, I'm just going all over the Bible to show you that you got to keep God's commandment. I'm told, I, I like to know what excuse can you, you say after listening to this lesson, say, well, we don't have to keep them commandments then something is wrong with you. Proverbs 4, and we're going to pick it up at verse 1. Go ahead. Hear ye, children, the instructions of a father, and attend to no understanding. Go ahead. For I give you good doctrine. He said, I didn't give, I didn't give you good doctrine. doctrine. Go ahead. Forsake ye not my law. He's forsake not my law. Go ahead. For I, was, for I was my father's son. Tender and only beloved in the sight of my mother. Go ahead. He taught me also and said unto me, Let thy heart retain my word. He's let thy heart retain uh, my word and what else? Keep my commandments and live. Keep my commandment and do what? And live. And live. Keep my commandment and live. Go ahead. Get wisdom. Get wisdom. Get understanding. Go ahead. Forget it not. Neither decline from the words of my mouth. Go ahead. Forsake her not. And she shall preserve thee. Love her, and she shall keep thee. Wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore, get wisdom, and with all thy getting, get understanding. See, with all your getting, you got to get some understanding about the word of God, brother and sister. You shouldn't go to church and you don't understand that you got to keep God's commandment. How you going that to, is, that is the main thing on the table. When you decide you're going to repent. And turn your life around, you say, hey, I'm going to stop doing what I used to do. I used to lie. I used to steal. I used to do all these things. Now you're going to come into church because you're under grace. You don't have to do these things no more. You can still do them, but now you're under grace. Come on, brothers and sisters. Come on. I know you're wiser than that. The Lord then gave you a mind. And someone, sometime when you go to church, maybe you need to use that mind. Then if you're sitting in front of somebody that's perverting the word of God, telling you you don't have to keep those commandments because they're too hard, well, I done showed you in the Bible that it said that the commandment is not grievous. Why is they grievous to you? Why are they grievous to you? Let's go into, let's go into Romans, the sixth chapter. Let's, let's, let's look at this grace thing because people be, thinking, oh, we don't have to keep the law because we're on the grave. But we're going to get some understanding in that. That's what he's saying. All that getting, get understanding. Romans 6, and let's, let's pick it up at verse 14. Romans 6 and verse 14. Because ain't no sense you going to church and ain't getting no understanding. Romans 6, and we're going to pick it up at verse 14. Okay, go ahead. 
For sin, for sin shall not have dominion over you. Now he says sin shall not have dominion over you. Why? For ye are not under the law, but under grace. See, they go there and read and say, we ain't under the law. We under grace. But, but even, if, even if I would even explain this, all this other stuff that I done read, that wouldn't even make sense, would it? But I done read all over the Bible that you got to keep the commandment. Now, you read one little spot where he said, don't let... Don't let sin have dominion over you. You're not under the law, but you're under grace. Go ahead. What then? Shall we sin? Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Apparently, we don't know what sin is. Go ahead and finish that verse. We're going to go find out what sin is because if the law is done away with, I'm going to show you, he shouldn't even be mentioning nothing about sin. Finish that verse, 15. What then? Shall we sin? Because we are not under the law. What did he say? But under grace, God forbid. He said, God forbid. But let's go and look. I mean, we don't come back here. Let's go and look and find out what sin is. See, that's what the whole world might be missing on. They don't know what sin is. And if you don't know what sin is, then you don't, you don't, I'm going to show you that uh, sin and law is tied to the hip. Uh, uh, 1 John 3. Please write this down. 1 John 3. 1 John 3, and we're going to read one verse, verse 4. 1 John 3 and verse 4. If you don't know what sin is, this is what sin is. Go ahead. Whosoever committeth sin. Whoever commits sin. What? Go ahead. Transgressive also the law. Transgressive means to break, to break the law. Go ahead. For sin is the transgression of the law. For sin is the transgression of the law. Sin is the breaking of the law. So how can, how can Paul, now if, if, if you're under grace and the law been done away with, why is Paul talking about sin? Let's go to Romans 5. Romans 5, let me show you something. Romans 5, and we'll read one verse again. Verse 13. Romans 5 and verse 13. Go ahead. For well, until the law, sin was in the world. But sin is not imputed when there is no law. He said, if it ain't no law, then it ain't no sin. I'm to do, how hard is that to understand? If it's not a stop sign, then you can't get a ticket for running a stop sign. And that's the same thing. Paul, how can Paul say, shall we sin? How can we sin, Paul, if it ain't no law? Right. Because the law is the one that directs you to sin. Now let's go and let me show you. Because you remember what he said? He said, sin should not have dominion over you. Let's go to Romans 7. He's going to explain this. Romans 7. And we're going to pick it up at verse 1. Romans 7 and verse 1. Okay, go ahead. Know ye not, brethren. He said, know you not, brethren. Go ahead. For I speak to them that know the law. I speak to them that know the law. Go ahead. How that the law have dominion over a man as long as he lives. Now, what did he just say? How the law have dominion over man as long as he lives. But he just told you, or in another chapter, he said, don't let, uh, take heed that the law don't have dominion over you. But he, now he's telling you, long as you live, the law going to have dominion over you. But now he's going to tell you how to, how to get from under this thing. Go ahead. For the woman which have an husband is bound by the law to her husband so long as he liveth. But if the husband be dead, she is loose from the law of her husband. See, that's what he's saying. He's as long as your husband is living, you bound to this guy. But once he die, then you loose from him. Now, I'm going to show you, he's also dealing with the law. Skip down to verse 6. He's going to explain it. Go ahead. But now we are delivered from the law. But now we are delivered from the law. Go ahead. That being dead, wherein we wait were a minute, held. Wait a minute, being what? Being dead. Being dead. Go ahead. Wherein we were held, that we should serve in newness of spirit and not in the oldness of the letter. Go ahead. What shall we say then? Is the law sin? God forbid. Nay, I had not known sin but by the law. He said, I have not known sin but by the law. So if you get rid of the law, how would Paul know sin? How would anybody know sin? I'm going to show you something. One time back in uh, uh, a long time ago, uh, 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 Sears down there on 62nd and uh, Western, they used to pile all these tires up behind the store. And I thought you just go in there and take them. A partner of mine had an old car, had bad wheels on them. And we was going there taking these tires. 
and putting on his car. And then the guy caught, saw us doing it, and he told us, said, look, y'all can't take these tires. So now I told my partner, I'm not, he wanted to go back down there. I said, no, I can't go back down there. You know why? Because now I know if I take these tires what I'm doing. I'm stealing. Yes, sir. So well, guess what I did? I died to that. He ain't talking about physically die. You just stop doing it. That's when you become a servant of God. You die to sin. That's how you delivered from the law. Go ahead. What verse we at? Middle of seven. Go ahead. For I had not known lust, except the law has said, thou should not covet. See, if, if the law don't say it, I don't know I'm lusting. I didn't know I was still in them tires until that guy made it clear, hey, we just throwing them out of here, but you cannot take them. Go ahead. But sin, taken occasion by the commandment, wrought in me all manner of concupiscence. For without the law, sin was dead. He said, without the law, sin is dead. Go ahead. For I was alive without the law once. I was taking them tires once until this guy told me we couldn't take them no more. Go ahead. But when the commandments came, sin revived and I died. When the guy came and told us we can't take these tires, we stealing, I died to that. That's all he's saying here. But did, is the law been done away with? No. You just died to the law. That's what Paul is trying to tell you. Go ahead. And the commandment which was ordained to life, I found to be unto death. See, these commandments that's ordained to life, because if you keep the commandment, you're going to live forever. But guess what these commandments got to do to you? They got to kill you. They got to kill you. In other words, I got to stop stealing if I want to get the part of the life part of these commandments, brothers and sisters. He, in other words, you got to, you, you got to die to self because this old flesh and blood want to do things that it shouldn't do. And this is all Paul is saying is that you got to die because these commandments are ordained to life. They're going to kill you if you want to be a servant of God. Go ahead. For sin, taking occasion by the commandment, deceived me, and by it slew me. It slew me. made me stop doing that. Go ahead. Wherefore the law is holy. Wherefore the law is holy. And the commandment is holy. The commandment is holy. And just and good. Why would God get rid of something that's just and good? Somebody needs to explain that to me. Why would he get rid of that? Go ahead. Was then that which is good made death unto me. God forbid. But sin that it might appear sin working death in me by that which is good. See, now he's saying, when I see that I'm doing wrong, then that killed the old me. Mm -hmm. And I start doing the right thing, brothers and sisters. I start walking within the law by not breaking the law. Go ahead. That sin by the commandments might become exceedingly sinful. For we know that the law is spiritual. The law is spiritual. Go ahead. But I am carnal, sold under sin. He said, I'm carnal, sold under sin. Uh, go ahead. For that which I do... I allow not, for what I would, that do I not, but what I hate, that do I. Now, he said, he said the things that I, I want to do, because this old flesh and blood, I always want to do something that it don't, don't supposed to do. Then I got to find a law. Look what he say, if I want to do the right thing, what do you have to do? Go ahead. If then I do that which I would not, I consent unto the law that it is good. Now, he said, then I consent unto a law. Because you got to have something to make. If you want to do right, you got to, the law is the one that put it on the table. So no, I can't do that because I'm a servant of God. Read the next verse. I mean, uh, skip down to uh, verse 24 and go ahead. Oh, wretched man that I am. He's so wretched man that I am. Go ahead. Who shall deliver me from the body of this death? I thank God through Jesus Christ our Lord. So then with the mind I myself Serve the law of God. He said, with the mind, because the, the, the word is in your mind, brothers and sisters. That's what stopped you from doing stuff. He said, with the mind. But if I start dealing with this old, my mind, which is the, that old fleshly mind, then I'm going I'm to do something that I don't want to do. Go ahead. But with the flesh, the law of sin. But with the flesh, the law of sin. See, the law ain't been done away with, brother. That is not what Paul's saying. And I need to ask you a quick question. What mind, what mind do you have as a Christian? Do you have a spiritual mind or do you have a carnal mind? Now, if you're a Christian, I know you're going to say you have a what? Spiritual mind. Let's go to Romans 8. Let's go to Romans 8 and pick it up at verse 6. 
Because I need to find out what kind of mind, if you are serving a God, which one you got. Uh, uh, Romans 8 and verse 6. If you got a spiritual mind, let's see what you're supposed to be doing. Go ahead. For to be carnally minded is death. To be carnal minded is death. So I know you're not that right. Go ahead. But to be spiritual minded is life and peace. To be spiritual minded is life and peace. So I'm, I'm asking you, which one are you? Are you kernel minded? Are you spiritual minded? I'm going to see with your action tell which mind you are. Go ahead. Because the kernel mind is enmity against God. Now the kernel mind is envy against God. In other words, the, the kernel mind do not like what God put on the table. Right. Go ahead. For it is not subject to the law of God. Wait a minute. The kernel mind is not subject to the law of God. So the spiritual man must be subject to the law of God, right? He said a kernel man is not subject to the law of God. And go ahead. Neither indeed can be. Because if you got a kernel mind, brother, you walking in, you walking in that old man. You doing what you want to do. And neither can it can be. Because you got to be, you got to have a spiritual mind to do to follow Christ. Let's go to first John. Let's go to first John three. Brothers and sisters, this thing is so plain, but we don't let these false prophets pervert all this stuff and everybody's laws. But it's right here. 1 John 3, and we'll pick it up at verse 1. 1 John 3 and verse 1. Go ahead. Behold, what manner of love the Father have bestowed upon us that we should be called the sons of God. Therefore, the world knoweth not because it knew him not. Go ahead. Beloved, now are we the sons of God and it doeth not yet appear what we shall be. But we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him. For we shall see him as he is. And we're going to see when God appear, we're going to be just like him. Skip down to verse 5 and go ahead. And ye know that he was manifested to take away our sins, he, and in him is no sin. See, God was manifested to take away our sin. He wasn't manifested to take away the law. Let me just go, let's go and show you what I'm talking about. It's Romans 3. Go to Roman 3. Roman 3, and we're going to pick it up at verse 23. Because God was manifest to take away our sin. Romans 3 and 23. Go ahead. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Now, this is the sin that he came to take away. Because we all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Go ahead. Being justified freely by his grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus, whom God has sent forth to be a propitiation through faith in his blood, to declare his righteousness for the remission of sins that are passed through the forbearance of God. See, Jesus came to take away our sin that are past. He take away your past sin and give you a new start when you come into Christ. That's what this is talking about. He is the remission of sin. Let me show you when Jesus died, that's what he was talking about. He, ain't, he wasn't even talking about taking away the royal law. Matthew 26 and we're going to pick it up at verse 26. Matthew 26 and 26. Go ahead. And as they were eating, Jesus took bread and blessed it and break it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body. And he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of it. For this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for many for the remissions of sin. Now, he sees we still dealing with that remission. That's what Jesus came to do to get re to for remission of sin. You know what remission means? To get rid of. Get rid of. He came to get rid of your sin. Not the royal law. But, but, but before Jesus showed up, what were we dealing with? We was dealing with animal sacrifice, brothers and sisters. Let's go to Matthew, Hebrew 10. See, the whole world act like they don't know about animal sacrifice. Hebrews 10, and we're going to pick it up at verse 1. Because before Jesus came along, we was kept under animal sacrifice. And that's what, that's what, that's what we was, 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 was a temporary condition that God used before Jesus came along. Hebrews 10, and we're going to pick it up at verse 1. Pay attention to this. Go ahead. For the law having a shadow of good things to come. What law is we talking about here? We're going to, we're going to, we, you notice he said the law. Go ahead. And not the very image of the things can never with those sacrifices which they offer year by year continually make the commerce until perfect. Now we're talking about the sacrificial law. Go ahead. For then 
would they not have ceased to be offered? So we stopped offering the sacrificial law because we couldn't do nothing. Go ahead. Because that the worshipers once purged should have had no more conscience of sin. Go ahead. But in those sacrifices, there is a remembrance again made of sin every year. Go ahead. For it is not possible that the bloods of bulls and goats should take away sin. Now they couldn't, bulls and goats couldn't take away sin. Go ahead. Wherefore, when he comes into the world, he says, Sacrifice and offers thou would have not, but a body has thou prepared me. Now he prepared him a body because he had to die, because these animals didn't work. Go ahead. And burnt offers and sacrifices for sin, thou hast had no pleasure. He didn't have no pleasure in sacrifice, not the royal law. Skip down to verse 8 and go ahead. Above, when he says, Sacrifice and offers, the burnt offers and offers for sin, thou would have not, neither has pleasure therein, which are offered by the law. The law of animal sacrifice. He didn't have no pleasure in that. Skip down to verse 11 and go ahead. And every priest stand of daily ministering and offering oftentimes the same sacrifice, which can never take away sins. That's animal but, sacrifice. Could not take away sin. Go ahead. But this man, after he had offered one sacrifice for sins forever, sat down on the right hand of God. Now skip down to verse 16 and go ahead. This is the covenant that I will make with them after those days, said the Lord, I will put my laws in their hearts and in their minds. Wait a minute, he'll still them. deal with these laws. He's going to put his laws in your mind. You notice he didn't get rid of them. Go ahead. And their sins and iniquities will I remember no more. Now, where remission of there is, there is no more offerings for sin. He says no more offering for sin because Jesus came and died for sin. That's what the law that Jesus came and put away with. And that's why when you read this in Romans, the 10th chapter, you should understand what he's talking about. Romans 10, and we're going to read one verse. Romans 10, and we're going to read verse 4. Okay, go ahead. For Christ is the end of the law. What law righteous. is Christ the end of? Animal sacrifice, sacrifice, brothers and sisters. Go ahead. For righteousness to everyone that believeth. Now Christ is the end of the law, brothers and sisters. But what law is he the end of? He the end of animal sacri the animal sacrificial law. You got to keep God's commandments, brothers and sisters, if you want to be part of God's kingdom. So I hope you learned something from this, and I thank you for your time.